This is Gordotech. Making and using a spore syringe. In a prior video, I described using agar. In this video, I'll describe the alternative, which is a spore syringe. The advantages of agar include strain isolation. This can produce stronger growth, bigger flushes, and more consistent results. Cleans up dirty spore prints. With agar, you can cut out only the best growth and avoid all contamination that might have been on the original spore print. The disadvantages include it takes longer. There are extra steps that could introduce contamination and it's less beginner friendly. The advantage of using a spore syringe is that it's faster. Total time from spores to harvest is reduced. It is easier. This makes it more beginner friendly. There is less contamination risk, assuming your spore print is clean to begin with. Disadvantages. No strain isolation. This can result in lower yields or uneven fruiting. Requires a clean spore print. If the spore print you have is not clean, you may have problems. So there's the agar versus spore syringe comparison. I should also note that you can buy a spore syringe, but you can't buy a colonized agar plate. So the complete beginner who doesn't really want to do anything from scratch can simply buy a spore syringe in sterile grain jars with injection ports and inject the grain jars and wait. It's that easy to make grain spawn. However, in this video, I'll show you how to do it all yourself from scratch. The first thing you will need to make a spore syringe is a sterile syringe. These can be found on Amazon. Just make sure that you get one that's sterile. I will put a link in the video description. You can also find these at Tractor Supply. Blunt tips are fine and will be used in this video, but sharp tips have a small advantage as they are easier to poke through polyfill or myco bags, but it's really not that important. Note that if your syringe is not sterile, most can actually survive a pressure cooking without melting, so that is also an option. To use the spore syringe, you will need sterile grains, which you can either buy or make yourself. I'll put some links in the video description. If you are going to do it yourself, start by boiling some water in any cooking pot. After it's boiling, turn the burner off. You can use almost any grain, including the cheapest bird seed you can find, but for this video, I'll be using whole oats, which are sold inexpensively as horse food from most farm stores, including tractor supply. Figure out how many grain jars you want to make, and use one of the jars to measure out one jar full of grain for every two jars that you want to have in the end. The grain will expand, and you won't be completely filling the jars to the top. So that is why one full jar of dry grain will produce two finished grain jars. Each finished 16 ounce mason jar is enough to spawn one 13 by nine cake pan of substrate. So if you wanted to grow four cake pans, for example, you really only need to measure out two of these 16 ounce mason jars of dry grain, which will produce four finished jars. But it's good to create a couple of extra just in case there are any failed jars. After you've added the grain, stir it around so any defective grains float to the top. Use a strainer to remove anything that floats. This is grain that didn't properly form and it has little nutritional value. If you use bird seed, all of the sunflower seeds should float to the top for removal. Set a timer for one hour. Just let it sit in the pot for an hour. Keep the pot covered, but the heat is off so you don't have to worry if it sits for longer than an hour. It's okay to let it sit all day but only an hour is really necessary. Also note that you can just soak the grains in cold water if you want for 24 to 48 hours as an alternative, but the hot water process just speeds it all up. After the hour long soak, pour the grains into a strainer. I like to rinse it off and I look for anything that doesn't belong like sunflower seeds or corn and I remove any of that by hand. Then I cover it and I let it drip dry for 10 minutes. I also pick it up and Shake it a couple of times to remove any of the excess water. You'll need either myco bags or jars to put the grains in. Both work fine, but jars are a little easier. I'll show both. You'll need lids with injection ports, which you could buy, but you can also easily make them by drilling a hole in any mason jar lid. Then just take a little polyfill, which you can find at Walmart or online, and just stuff a little of that polyfill into the hole. If you have any old stuffed animals laying around that you don't want anymore, you can get polyfill from inside of those as well. It's helpful to use a pencil to push the polyfill through the hole. You always want to go from the top side of the lid to the bottom side. And then this is what it looks like when it's done. Fill each jar just a little bit more than halfway. This is because the grain will expand a little bit when you pressure cook it. Also, you need a little bit of extra room in there for shaking the grains later. Add your filter lid to the top, and then add the ring, and cover with foil.
Make sure you have plenty of water in your pressure cooker, then add all of your grain jars. If you have micro bags of grain, you can add those as well. We need a small jar of water, which will be used for creating the spore syringe. You could optionally use a mason jar halfway filled with water and pour the water you want for the spore solution later into a mixing glass or shot glass, but I'm just going to directly use this small jar without any water transfers. You can see it's a little less than halfway full. Put some foil over the top of your water jar and then add it to your pressure cooker. You will need a knife or razor for scraping the spores, so add that to your pressure cooker as well. You can wrap them in foil. If your syringe was not sterile, including one you've already used, just clean it off well with water and separate all the components, then wrap it all in foil and add that to your pressure cooker. But in this video, I will be using a pre-sterilized syringe. Add the lid and seal it shut. Leave the top valve open or wobble weight off initially for venting the initial air out. Heat should be on high. In a prior video I showed the All-American Sterilizer, so in this one I decided to show the Presto Sterilizer. I like both, but the Presto is much more affordable and it heats up faster, so I usually choose it first. I'll put a link to this model in the video description. So after you've seen a plume of steam venting out the top for 10 minutes, then you can add the wobble weight. A little trick I've learned with the Presto is that if you tape a couple of quarters to the wobble weight, it will operate at 17 PSI, which is preferred for sterilization. After the pressure has built up to 17 PSI, you can turn the heat down. Then set a timer for 45 minutes. Okay, so after the 45 minutes, you should wait for everything to cool down first. This could take several hours. Then move all of the contents of the sterilizer to your still air box or flow hood. I'll be using a flow hood in this video, but I did show how to make and use a still air box in a prior video. I'll put a link to that in the video description. I want to emphasize that the water should have cooled down below 85 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 Celsius before proceeding. I'm going to spray down my gloved hands with some isopropyl alcohol, 70%, and I'll also spray down my work area. I recommend wearing freshly laundered clothing, a face mask, and a hairnet all the basics to help prevent contamination from your own body from getting into your spore solution. At this point you need to decide how much spore solution you want to make and pour off any excess water until you are left with only the amount you want. The less water used, the more concentrated your spore solution will ultimately be. If your spore print is small, you may want to use less water. 10 cc's of spore water is enough to inoculate about 6 jars of grain. Even a small print, however, can be used to make 20 cc's of spore water. There will be hundreds of thousands of spores even in a small print. A large print could be used to make dozens of spore syringes. Carefully unwrap or open up your spore print. Using your sterile knife or razor, scrape the spores directly into your sterile water. Some people prefer to scrape the spores into a shot glass and then add water after the fact which can reduce the amount of time the water is exposed to the air, but I haven't had any contamination issues going direct to the water, and using only one container may be less prone to contamination than using two or more different containers. So just continue scraping until you can't see any spores left. Next, take out your syringe needle and open it up. Then take out the syringe. The syringe just twists into the base of the needle. This is called a lure lock. Then remove the cover to the needle. Place the needle into the spore water. You want to mix the spores up so they are more evenly distributed throughout the water. You can do this by drawing up water and then pushing it back out. Repeat this numerous times and try to draw water from different parts of the jar. This will also break up any clusters of spores. Fill the syringe with spore water. The syringe I'm using here only holds 3 milliliters, which is the same as 3 cc's. Note that with a small spore print, you may not see any spores in the spore water. This is fine and it's expected. There are still hundreds of thousands of spores in there. They just aren't visible in the water. Then remove the foil from one of these sterile grain jars and carefully stick the needle through your injection port. Squirt out between half a milliliter to one milliliter at a time in two or three different directions. Use some force to try to shoot the spore water up against the glass sides. This will help make it easier to see the mycelium growing later because it will be visible through the glass. You can agitate the spore water again and then refill the syringe for the next jar. 
I'll zoom through this footage because it will be the same for all jars. With a myco bag of grain, you can either inject by poking a hole right through the bag, or if the bag isn't sealed, you can inject the spore water from the top and then seal the bag shut. If you do use myco bags, I do recommend an impulse sealer to seal it shut, but you could possibly get away with just using clear packing tape to seal it shut. If you want to save some of the spore water, you can replace your syringe needle with a lure lock syringe tip cap. I'll put a link in the video description. The spore water should remain viable for 8 to 12 months and can last even longer if stored in a refrigerator. So simply twist off the needle and then twist on the tip cap. I'd recommend putting this in a Ziploc bag for long term storage. The next step is to incubate those grains. If your room temperature is above 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 Celsius, you could just keep them at that temp without using any supplemental heat. But different species of spores will germinate and grow fastest at different temperatures. So I would recommend searching online for whatever species you're trying to grow and get some guidelines for the ideal temperature. Many species prefer 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit and some species like Pansayan prefer 80 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. For optimal growth. There are various ways to add heat. Some people use a heat mat at the bottom of a tote. I showed in a prior video using a big cooler with a small space heater and thermostatic switch in it. And here I'll show another option. Get two identically sized totes, put water in one, and add an aquarium heater. Set the desired temp on the heater, and then put the other tote inside of the first. The water should come up to around one-third or one-half the height of the top tote. Put all of your inoculated grains in the top tote and add a cover. If you have a thermometer, add that as well, and then you can monitor the temperatures to make sure they stay within the desired range. The temperature in the tote is 83 degrees Fahrenheit or 28 degrees Celsius. This is just five days after inoculation, after sitting in the incubator. And you can already see some nice mycelial growth. That's the white fuzz you can see. There's no guarantee that you'll get growth this quickly. Sometimes it can take several weeks, but if your spores are vigorous and you use the right temps, it will be faster. Here's a quick look at one of the other jars, also on the same day. You can see there's quite a bit of growth there. There's also lots of growth in the myco bag. Six days after inoculation, you can see a lot of growth now. When it hits about third colonization like this, it's time to shake it up. That will rapidly colonize the rest of the grains. By day six, most of the grain jars are even more than a third colonized, so we can shake these all up. You only need to shake the grains one time because the shaking itself can damage the mycelium, but it does spread it all around, so it will rapidly take off and recover from that damage. This is two days after shaking them up and eight days in total from inoculation. And you can see that they are almost fully colonized at this point. Perhaps in one more day it'll be fully colonized. Here's a look at the myco bag. You might notice that the temperature in your tote is rising a little bit as the mycelial growth increases. That's normal and the mycelium itself will produce some heat. So you may have to adjust your thermostat accordingly to keep your temperatures within the desired range. Three days after shaking the grains, we have full colonization. That's just nine days from spores to ready to use grain spawn. Just out of curiosity, I wanted to find out how quickly I could go from spores to mushroom harvest, and my record so far is just 22 days. So that means from where we are right now to harvest can be done in just 13 additional days. Okay, now I've covered everything you need to go from spore print to mushroom harvest if you combine this with my prior video.
Thanks for watching, and don't forget to request a free spore print if you want the best genetics in the known world right now. They have been going fast, and I have now sent them to more than 35 different countries all over the world, including Australia, Japan, Malaysia, Indonesia, India, Turkey, Russia, South Africa, Germany, the UK, and many other countries. I have to keep all my controversial content on the Patreon page only to avoid triggering the censors here at YouTube, who have a history of deleting content creators like myself. The revolution will not be televised. You can follow me on Patreon for free, and all content there is available to everyone. You do not have to support the channel to gain access, although your support is always appreciated. Besides Patreon, you can follow me on social media to get alerts about new content as well. I don't post often, but will announce all new content there. See the links in the video description.